Having celebrated July 4th, it is suitable that we reflect on our duties of patriotism. Patriotism is a virtue binding by the fourth commandment out of love of country. Our country holds a view of separation of church and state. Perhaps on this account, people do not look upon patriotism as a spiritual virtue, but merely a matter of politics. We need to correctly understand that the separate roles of church and state of divine and natural laws cannot be opposed to one another. God intends that both church and state cooperate in assisting men to attain their eternal salvation. God deigns that both church and state assist men toward eternal salvation. God has created us as social beings. We must work together in society. Since commerce is essential, so also government is essential to maintain peace and order. Again, the goal of government is to assist men toward their eternal salvation. This is achieved by securing the common temporal welfare in society. Peace and prosperity in society best enable the church to concentrate on the spiritual welfare of the faithful. Recall our Lord's words to the Pharisees as they deceitfully attempted to entrap him in his speech. They pretended to praise him. Master, we know that thou art truthful and that thou teachest the way of God in truth and that thou carest not for any man, for thou dost not regard the person of men. With false cunning praise, they attempt to draw from Christ a condemnation of the payment of the Roman tax. This would give them a pretense to accuse Christ of disturbing the public order. Only after implying the answer which they expected did they present their question. Tell us, therefore, what dost thou think? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? But the thoughts of hearts are exposed before the divine gaze as our Lord rebukes them for their deceitful intent. He turns their question upon themselves to their further confusion. Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin of the tribute. Christ settles the issue after asking them to verify the inscription. Thus he concludes, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. At times our Lord's words are taken to imply that the affairs of the state and those of the church are two completely separate spheres. But again, God desires the right order of society that we might thereby more easily attain our eternal salvation. The eternal salvation of the citizens is then the ultimate goal of governments. Eternal salvation is also the reason why Christ founded his church. Thus, although church and state have distinct spheres of influence, they both have the same goal, the eternal salvation of their members.
There was a glorious time when the countries of Europe enjoyed both the Catholic faith and the rule of Christian governments. There was relatively little conflict between the spiritual interests of the church and the temporal interests of the state. But our modern-day governments promote false freedoms. Modern society does not wish to be constrained by the moral influence of the Catholic Church. And so our modern-day history books refer to these Middle Ages as being the Dark Ages. The term implies that these ages were lacking in progress and that the people were not well educated. We must understand that the state is obliged to enforce moral laws. We owe obedience to the righteous laws of the state. Thus, we owe obedience to both church and state we correctly understand that our faith motivates us to fulfill our duties to our country. An admirable admirable example of this loyalty to faith and country is taken from Ecuador's President Garcia Moreno of the late 1800s. It was the time when the Vatican states were seized by the government of Italy. And so it became necessary for Ecuador to sign a concordat with the reduced Vatican states. A concordat, you see, is the formal agreement between the Pope and the government of a country regulating the administration of the church, the church affairs, in the country. Although concordats are necessary for practical reasons, at times they are abused by civil governments, which place unjust limitations on the functioning of the church. But President Moreno, having publicly enthroned his country to the sacred heart of Jesus, desired to most graciously and fully cooperate with the church. Thus, he gave his papal ambassador a blank sheet of paper having only his signature at the bottom. He instructed his ambassador to reassure Pope Pius IX that whatever his holiness would write above his signature, would meet with his complete approval. In assuring the full freedom of the church to function in Ecuador, President Moreno also secured the best interests of his country. He was assassinated by liberal anti-clerical reactionaries. But his policy assured the stability of the church in spite of the ensuing period of revolutionary turmoil. During this troubled time, the church contributed to restoring calm in Ecuador. For again, the salvation of souls is the highest law. This is the final goal for both church and civil government. There can be no true law which works against the salvation of souls. A law must not contradict right morality, for if a law opposes morality, it is not a true law. St. Thomas Aquinas explains that all laws must be reasonable, that is, They must not go against right reason by commanding what is immoral. An immoral law, such as divorce, abortion, or indecency, 
may not be obeyed. We must object to such immoral laws. We must help our fellow citizens to realize that such laws are immoral, and we must strive to have such laws repealed. Most importantly, we must pray for our leaders and for our country. As the sisters sang their July 4th concert, one song was introduced as being both a song and a prayer, for it was indeed a prayer for our country. In singing of our country, one stanza stood out by invoking, May God mend her every flaw. May God indeed heal our country. Consider that Saints Peter and Paul were ordered by the council of the Jewish leaders to no longer speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But the apostles replied, whether it is right in the sight of God to to listen to you rather than to God, decide for yourselves. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. By correcting immoral legislation, we show the greatest patriotism. For such laws bring the greatest harm upon society. We have seen the most tragic consequences of such false laws in our country, as well as other nations, alas, even Catholic countries, which have been betrayed by the false liberal spirit of Vatican II. At times, such laws are approved by a vote of the citizens in the expectation of economic prosperity or equal trade with other countries such as in the European Union. The church is not opposed to economic prosperity, but there can be no true prosperity by sacrificing proper morality. Immoral laws eventually work against economic interests. A century ago, Archbishop Spalding of New York pointed out that the love of truth, justice, and righteousness is higher than love of country. For he went on to explain, he alone is a patriot who is willing to suffer obliquely and the loss of money and friends rather than betray the cause of truth, justice, and righteousness. For only by being faithful to this can he rightly serve his country. Our highest patriotic duty, therefore, is to pray and strive for the highest interests of our country. And the highest interest is, first and foremost, the sanctification of our country and of our fellow citizens. Let us also pray for our nation's security and prosperity. Now, we need to be informed citizens. Yes, there are immoral laws which need to be corrected. We need to understand how to discuss these issues so that we may persuade others to turn them away from immoral laws and that they also may accept righteous morality. In times past, Catholics have been looked upon with suspicion as if our loyalties were divided between America and Rome. And so in closing, let us call to mind our duties of patriotism. As emphasized a century ago by Archbishop Ireland of St. Paul, the Catholic Church commands and consecrates patriotism. The true Catholic must needs be the true patriot. In the eyes of the church, loyalty to country is loyalty to God. 
Patriotism is a heavenly virtue, a high and holy form of obedience. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.